Can we give the Lord a praise offering? Amen. Just give the Lord a clap. Hallelujah. Uh, I know most of you are saying, who's that guy? <laughs> uh, that's what my wife said after our fifth year of marriage. But uh, I said, it's me, honey. <laughs> Um, well, I'm Pastor Eric. I'm the Spanish pastor for Pine Castle. We meet at 11 uh, at Oasis. So my wife is preaching today. So that's, I have a great teammate. She's a phenomenal preacher. So I'm, it's great for me to be able to be here before you guys. How many like the painting today that Brother Seth did, huh? Isn't it nice? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, every week he's, he's painting a new one. And uh, I wonder how much he's going to sell that one for. Huh? That's a, that's a nice one. Uh, okay, I'll, it's a different message, different sermon. Uh, how many are happy today? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, that was, whoa, what was that? <laughs> how many happy? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah awesome. Well, listen, uh, we've, uh, the church has been ministering, I know, throughout the whole year, and it's been a message about Jesus, and now we're doing the, the songs of Christmas. But I wanted to... Um, uh, bring a, a different aspect of the angel's song. I think um, I'm like Pastor Scott when he said he was tired of making the Christmas cards, uh, you know, the same way and matching jeans and all that, kind of, look, kind of like looking like this. Um, so when he said that, I was like, oh, man, I knew I should have worn something different, you know. But uh, um, I said, let, let me ask the Lord, Lord, guide me to, we can bring this a bit different because I believe that the word is always a revelation. It's a fresh word every single day. How many can say amen? So we are speaking about the angel's song. I want you to open up your Bibles with me if you have it with you in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And I was was seeking the Lord and I said, okay, well, I can name it the angel's song and that's what the header and the Bible say, the angel's song, and that's okay. But as the Lord was ministering to me, I understood it as, Heaven's declaration and mankind's opportunity. Heaven's declaration and mankind's opportunity. There are things that are happening in this simple verse of Scripture that if we can be able to embrace it today, it really changes our mindset, not only about Christmas or this season, because many of us are are shopping in different stores and, and having a great time and eating. I just came from Argentina, was ministering with my wife, and I ate so much. I don't feel guilty about it, not, not one. It was just phenomenal. I mean, when they cook a, a cow, I mean, they cook meat. <laughs> and I am, uh, uh, I say yay and amen <laughs> when every time I see that. So we had a great time. But as I'm thinking in the plane, I'm coming over and I'm saying, Mankind's opportunity by heaven's declaration. Let's look at that verse of scripture. It says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom, what? He is pleased. So let's read this again. Glory to God in the highest. Peace among those whom he is pleased. And as we see the season that we're walking in, we're continuously buying things, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and, and, and having our dinners and enjoying our time with friends and family members and, and just, just a great time. I was thinking, how about if we are able to give the gift that continues on giving? How about if we can be able to present the gift that we have received, that you don't have to get into debt for it, you don't have to overpay for it, it's always in stock, it's always ready, it's ready to go, it's locked and loaded, and that gift is Jesus. Hello? Just a gift that, I mean, from the moment that you receive Jesus as your Savior, then something starts to stir within you. Things started to change. I don't know about you, but in my life, things began to change. Things that used to be okay with me was not okay no more. And, and things that uh, uh, really I didn't pay attention to, now I began to pay attention to it because there was a gift. I received something from God, and that was Jesus himself. And when we understand that, and I was reading this scripture, these three elements came out and just shot out at me 
of the declarations of this verse of Scripture. And I want you to read the first line or the first words that it says, Glory to God in the highest. One of the greatest things that the angels did, and not only one angel, the previous verse says that the heavenly host came after and behind the angels as they sang this song. Glory to God in the highest. The angels began to declare and decree that Jesus is Lord. That the angels began to decree and prepare the hearts of mankind. Something is, has arrived. Something is about to change your destiny. Something is about to change your atmosphere. Something is about to change your sphere of influence. And that is Jesus. And one of the things of the declaration, it says, it gives renewed hope in our lives. Because the declaration of God declares his position. He is not your normal buddy that you play basketball with or you go play golf with, though he is there with you. But he is more than just that type of a friend. He is Lord and Savior. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. When the angels rang out and they sang and they said the statement, they didn't say like sometimes how we kind of say it, glory to God in the highest. It, 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 it didn't sound that way. I can imagine the, the roar in the angels' voices as they sang. And they said, glory to God in the highest. It's an announcement. There is hope that is coming for your life. Something is about to change. You're not going to be the same anymore. Every single step that you take is going to be different. Glory. Glory to who? To God who is in the high place. And when we understand that the, that the declaration of his position that the angels were establishing, because they could have easily said, hello, mankind, now everything is going to go well for you. There's salvation. No, the first thing they declared, glory to God, renewed hope that comes into your life. The Old Testament uh, in verse in Isaiah 9, 6 uh, also says about this. It says, for unto us a child is born, to us his son is given, and to the government, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There is, is a renewed hope in the declaration in the angel's song. And it doesn't stop at that moment in time in history where Jesus steps into the darkness of mankind and appears. Because we understand that he has been uh, foreshadowed in the Old Testament. We understand that. But now he steps into mankind's time dimension or time capsule, as I say. And he says, and the angels say, there is now a renewed hope for mankind because before you was lost and now you've been found. What is the other thing that the declaration gives you? It gives us redemption. For we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. When you understand that there is hope, the angels were making sure that we understand this one segment, this one thing in history. Glory to God in the highest because there is renewed hope and there is redemption. Redemption is coming to change the circumstance. The third thing comes in and, and it gives us his position and it gives us his identity. It gives us God's identity. He is God and he is glorious and he is in the heavens. That he is so close but yet so far, but so far but yet so close. Kind of sounds the same thing but it kind of means well. Doesn't matter how far you might think the Lord is from your life, God is with you. That is the hope that we, I mean, we can come and sing carols, but at the end of the day, there's so many people that I've spoken to that they go through depression, they've gone through situations. Just this week, I spoke to someone that was going through a difficult time because they felt lonely, and I said, you know something? Glory to God in the highest. And he looked at me. He says, what? 
you know, what are you doing? What does that mean? What does that have to do with me being depressed? And I said, don't you understand? He is in the high place. Therefore, he is reigning over your life. There is peace and there is hope and there is redemption for you. And he just stood there shocked and he said, Pastor, but, and I said, don't say but, just say it with me, glory to God in the highest. And he begins to repeat, and I said, as you repeat these words, the angels are declaring God's identity over your life. Look at what Revelations chapter 4 verse 11 says. It says, worthy are you, O our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. By your will, they existed and were created. Somebody should say an amen right about now. Because what's happening is what the angels are declaring, God decided to create you. It was by his will. It was by his design. It was not by a mistake. I spoke to another young, young lady a couple of months ago. She says, I was a mistake. I wasn't supposed to be here. My mom told me it was a one-night stand. It was a mistake. And I said, don't say you was a mistake because God decided to create you. You are here for a blessing. You are here for favor, for grace, because glory to God in the highest. There's hope for your life. There's hope for your family. You are going to change the lineage of your last name. Can you understand that when the angels sang, they are saying everything is going to change. Everything is going to change. The world that you view it now is going to flip upside down. Nothing's going to be the same ever again. Everyone understood that when they sinned before the Lord, they had to come with a peace offering. They understood that. They knew the law. But now, change was coming. Come on, somebody say, change is coming. There was a change coming. And they announced, glory to God in the highest. His identity of who he is. Because he created all things and if I can put it in a real layman's term, because he wanted to. Wow. That means I'm here because he wanted to. He wanted me to be. There don't have to be a second plan about it. He just decided I was going to be here. He decided you was going to be here. And when we look at the second part of the declaration that comes in, peace among those. That's just jumped out at me. And I want you to see this. It's the announcement of God's intention or his intent. Peace among those. And you, uh, the, the uh, NIV version says, on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. If you understand scripture, if you look at the Bible, the Bible is not just a history book and things like that. And it's really nice. It's literature and that's all great and dandy. But if you look at scripture and read the words, there is nothing written out of place. Everything means something. There's a purpose for the language of why it's written a certain way. And when it says, peace among those whom he is he is pleased with, or in the NIV version, says, whom his favor rests. So my question was to the Lord, so is the peace of God for everyone? And I can hear from the Lord saying, it's for everyone, but there's a catch to it. And I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I never knew that God had a catch to what he wanted to promise, and I understood it. And, and look at this. When it's peace, God's peace is not given to those who have good will, but it's to those who are recipients of God's good will and his favor. So he's ready to give it. He wants to give it. It's yours. It's yours for the taking. But you have to receive it. Mankind has to receive the peace to all those whom he has favor on. Because the moment that you receive 
his will and his, uh, his goodwill and his favor, at that moment, you become a person of favor. If I can explain to you what, what favor is, favor is understanding that there's an attitude that God has upon your life that no matter what happens at the end of the day, you're going to come and stand victorious at the end of the day. I was speaking to someone as well, and they were saying, Pastor, I'm going through a sickness. And I said, what are you believing God for? I said, well, that's how God wants me to be. And I said, really? He wants you to be that way? That's not the peace that God wants for mankind. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be in grace. He wants you to be in favor. He wants that when you open your mouth, why would God say, call upon me and I will answer you? The question comes about now is when we call upon the name of Jesus, are we believing what we're calling upon? Are we believing? Or are we just doing it? Well, that's how mom taught me. That's how my dad taught me. And Father, I just ask you. No, you have to believe that when you ask, the scripture says, you must believe that when you ask, you shall receive. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. So you have to understand that God's intention is for mankind to have peace when they receive his goodwill. Not because mankind has goodwill, because in our broken nature, we don't have nothing good within us. The depravity of man cannot allow us to decide, oh, today I'm going to serve God. It doesn't work that way. It has to be, we have to receive his love, receive his goodwill. And the moment we do that, we step into God's favor. Understanding that. Why? Because of the fall of mankind. Why does God want to restore the peace? Not only the peace between brothers and sister, but between, be, 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 between God and man. There has to be a, 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 a reconnection. That's why the gift that keeps on giving is the peace offering. Jesus is the peace offering to mankind. When the Father gave the Son, and the Scripture says, no one will take my life, but I give it freely. The gift that continues on giving, the gift that will never stop giving. Why? Because his intention is for you to live in peace, not only with man, but with him. And our third point is, that stands out is the last phrase. Peace among those whom he is pleased, or as the NIV says, whom his favor rests. Look at what it says. The meaning of favor again is, is, is a proof attitude or a token of loyalty. A proof attitude, a token of loyalty, a small gift. That's a sermon all by itself. That's a message right there. The small gifts of God. Sometimes we're so busy looking for the big gifts of God that we miss the little gifts of God. Uh, God, I, 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 I'm asking you for this promotion. It will be great for my family and I can... I can do a lot, of, a lot out of more things, and, and you're waiting on God, but yet you don't notice that your manager or your boss just happened to change your office into a better-looking office, and uh, there's a better team around you that's helping you out more. The little gifts are being missed because we're focusing so much on the big one. So much on the big one. And what God is saying, that's why he, watch this. That's why the angels only came to the shepherds in the field. Because he wanted mankind to start seeing the little gifts. Jesus could have been born in the Hyatt manger of, I don't know, pick a, pick, pick a city. The angels could have announced, 
with jumbotron scenery in Bethlehem. Where the whole city can just look up and say, wow, 3D. <laughs> you know. But no. All the way out in the field somewhere. Nobody's thinking about. No one is worrying about. There are some men dealing with the, sh- with the sheep, probably sleeping. And they hear a roaring, thunderous sound and song. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. God's commitment is to favor you. I'm going to say that again. God's commitment is to favor you. (laughs) That sounded so good. It it stirred me up. I'm going to say that again. God's commitment is to favor you. That wherever you walk, the kingdom of God is with you. That when you open your mouth, the kingdom of God is with you. The heavens open and the Lord is listening, just waiting for you to decree. Do you know something? There's a verse of scripture that says, whatever a man decreeth, so shall it be. So when the angels are saying, glory to God in the highest peace to all men who his favor rests, he is saying, the angels are saying, don't worry. doesn't matter what comes in your life, what attacks you in your life. God is on the throne. He is on your life. And he is going to favor you. And nothing can come against you. So when someone says, Pastor, or, your, or they say your name, and they say, uh, Jenny, or Jared, or Eric, or Arlene, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going through a tough time. Just say, open your mouth and give God favor and honor because he has favored you with blessings. He has favored you and given you grace so you can maneuver in life. <laughs> the angel saw Heaven's declaration. He declares his identity, his position. He declares his intention. And he declares his view about who you are. One of the greatest attacks of the enemy to the church and to a believer is their identity. Not the identity that you see in the mirror, businessman, teacher, Uh, housewife, mom, brother, daughter, son. But the image of the father. Because Jesus created you. And in creation, when he (coughs) blew in the pile of dirt that was formed into a body of man, and he blew his Ruach Kodesh, his Holy Spirit. His spirit was breathed into mankind. He was breathing his identity. Some of you might say, Pastor, you don't know what I've gone through. I said, you don't know what I've gone through either. I can tell you stories. But one thing I know, whatever I've gone through, God's pulled me out. You're still here. Therefore, God has pulled you out. God has made a way out of no way. You might be going through a trial right now. Right now. In your your chair. In your position. You're going through hell. God is saying. And the angels are singing. Glory to God in the highest. For he has favored you. He has favored you. So the question at the end is, Pastor, well, you said heaven's declaration. So then what's man's opportunity? It's simple. Accept Jesus. Okay, wait a minute. But Pastor, we have. No, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's, Let's take it slow here. Accept Jesus. 
that name entails a lot of things. <laughs> because when you say the name, uh, do you remember that Bible story when, I know, it's, I know it's not Christmassy or anything like that, but, but I, I just got to use that verse of scripture. You know that Bible story when, when um, uh, the, the, the scribes are trying to rebuke a demon? And they say, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. <laughs> Have you heard of that? In the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. I mean, they didn't, they didn't even believe it themselves. They said, in the guy that, that Paul preaches, you know that crazy guy? You know, he used to be one of us chasing you guys, but now he, he, he went across the line and, and he's with you guys. He went across the border kind of thing, you know. And then the spirits, the demonic spirits said, we know who Jesus is. Now watch this. We know who Jesus is and we know who Paul is. But who are you? Okay, Jerry, I'll let you preach that next sermon. <laughs> who are you? The spirits, were, they recognized the power in the name of Jesus, but they also recognized the power in the name of Paul. Paul didn't have any power within himself, but he was in Jesus. He was favored by God. So church, I tell you today, doesn't matter what situation you're going through, use the name of Jesus for every single situation because he has promised to favor you, favor your house. There's a great verse that says, for me and my house shall serve the Lord. I remember saying that and my son, Lord bless his heart. He was, oh, Lord. You know, he's 26. He's, he's our oldest, and he's a musician as well. And, man, when he was 17, I said, y'all don't know nothing about that stuff. You know, y'all were all angels when y'all were 17 years old. You know, and, and I remember my mom told me one day, Michelle, my, my, my mom said, Eric, when you get older and you have kids, you're going to pay for everything you made me go through. And I was a good Christian boy in, in, in the beginning stage. I was like, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Until my son came out. I was like, oh, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> forgive me among my sins, past, present, and future. You know, oh, man, Eric Jr. was like, oh, Lord. I mean, I was born blind with blue eyes. And look at me now. That boy put me through the furnace. <laughs> Woo! I said, Lord Jesus, give me patience. How much time do I got? I think I passed it already. Okay. But, you know, I, and, and I said, Eric, and, and, I, and my wife, she's such a godly woman. She's not here. She's, she's out preaching in our service. But she would say, honey, the word says, you know, for me and my house shall serve the Lord. And I say, yeah, and if he don't serve the Lord, I'll send them back to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was like, oh, the Bronx thing, the New York thing came out of me. I was like, I'll send this boy back express mail. You know, and it took us time, but I noticed something. We continued to pray and believe in the power in the name of Jesus. The scripture says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So I just want to close with this. Man's opportunity is to accept Jesus. The whole package. See, Jesus comes in a one package deal. He doesn't work at 50%. He doesn't work at 30%. It's the whole package. Lord, you, God, Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. You are Master and King. Come on, somebody. Because in those moments where you're, it's dark around you and your atmosphere has changed, you don't know where to turn. I've been there so many times. I've been there. Something about calling on the name of Jesus and just standing still. Listen, Lord, I'm not praying for a car, a house, a yacht. I'm not praying for anything. Not even for those golf lessons that I really need to learn how to play, you know. Uh, uh, none of that. Uh, Lord, I'm just asking, I can't deal with this situation. I need you now, Lord, now. 
Jesus, bring your peace and your favor and your grace upon me. And all of a sudden, my atmosphere changes. Because you can sense it when Jesus comes. I know we have the Holy Spirit, but it says he shall guide us to all truth. He shall guide you to me, the Lord said. In that moment, in that moment, I know what it is to go in the bathroom of an airport, close the lid, and say, Lord, I need you. A lot of people think that being a pastor is easy. It's easy work. It's not easy work. Because not only do we have to deal with our own issues, because we're not perfect, though we might like to tell our wives that we're perfect, but we're not perfect. <laughs> uh, we have to also carry the weight of the issues of every single one in the house, in the church. And we have to not only pray for our issues, but we have to pray for you as well. And we do it gladly. We do it with joy. Why? Because we understand it is not by might nor by power. Call upon the name of Jesus. When we accept him, the angel song rings constantly. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to man whom he has found favor. If you haven't found favor, then today's a great day to say, Lord, I need your favor. I need your grace. That wherever I walk, you're with me. Whenever I call upon your name, you respond. And even in the silence, God is moving. I remember when I was in the music conservatory, Manhattan School of Music in New York, and we had two weeks of understanding the power of the silence symbol in a score. And someone had the brilliant idea in the 70s to record a record of nothing on it. Nothing. All you hear is shh. Nothing, nothing, nothing is there. And I'm waiting in class. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for Duke Ellington music to come up or something, you know. And it was the power of silence. Do you know that even in God's silence, he's moving? <laughs> There's power in the silence. How they taught us in science that the tip of the iceberg is not the full iceberg. It's what's underneath. So let's embrace Jesus. Let's embrace the song and understand what it really means. It means he is sitting in the high place. Therefore, I give you favor and grace. Therefore, I give you redemption and hope. I give you a way out. I am the way out. Nothing will come against you. And when it does, it will not prevail. That's the angel song. Heaven's declaration and man's opportunity to live, watch this, consistently in the presence of the Lord on this earth. So many people are thinking about the kumbaya moment, and that's great. I can't wait to get there. But right now, the presence of God, like right now, I sense it in the atmosphere. Can you sense that? There's just a stillness. There's, there's things happening on your behalf right now as you're listening, as you're agreeing, even within yourself. You say, you know, that's kind of true. Things are happening. So why don't we just stand before the Lord right now as the worship team sings Agnes Day. And I want you to lift up your...